A powerful concept in software is the open-close principle. Entities should be open to extension, but closed for modification. This concept seems simple enough, but can be really difficult to master. There are many techniques to implementing this solid principle, including, but not limited to, using abstractions and extending with decorators, for instance, or using events to extend functionality at different points in an algorithm, or even creating aggregate services that execute multiple services in a specific logic algorithm. Uh, today, we're not going to use any of these methods. Instead, we're going to modify a simple but powerful file importer to allow for a .NET extension method to be used for creating new functionality. We're going to modify the current interface a little bit because we want to show the open close principle and how you should apply it in a general fashion. Then we'll extend. If you're new here at SparkPoint University, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Let's get started. Here I've created a fairly simple I delimited file importer. You'll see here I have an import uh, function. It has a file path that comes into it and I have some options. And these options are delimiter and allow blank datums. Basically, can I allow null values for my columns for each record? And out of it, I return a data table. I do not have an implementation of this yet. I don't even want to create that right now. I think that's kind of pointless because I need to have a good contract first. In fact, I can go ahead and do a lot of extensions and building of these extensions without ever even creating an implementation. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rename this because I didn't name it properly. We're going to say dot limit file importer. And we need to go ahead and think about how can we generalize this import method first. So I'm designing this interface, haven't created an implementation, so good thing. Otherwise, I'd have to change every implementation. Instead, maybe we really need to create a better importer. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do one thing first is I'm going to make this a generic. So I'm going to do a generic here of T and this T is going to be um, basically my return value. So it's going to be a record. And so let's name it that. Let's say I'm going to say T record. And then here in uh, data table, I'm going to say I innumerable of T record. And we'll do that. So, okay, now I've made that a little bit better. So now I can really have a way to map, if I wanted to, objects in the future. This could literally be data rows as well, and I can return back uh, a data table still, right? That's still a possibility. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk through that later. But again, for now, uh, I generalize it a little bit more. But then I have file path. This has limited my interface to only using files, and most likely only files on my local system. I don't like that at all. Instead, I'd rather be able to pull this information from anywhere. Um, so what can we use to generalize this? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the stream object, S-T-R-E-A-M, stream, meaning we could have a stream coming from a network, we could have a stream coming from a file, we could have a stream coming from anywhere, any, any type of stream, a memory stream. And so I think we'll first start by changing this to stream. That's nice. So when we go to implement, all we're going to care about is just reading from that stream. And then we have delimited file options, which will remain the same. The benefit for using options as a class allows us to add on to that class without potentially breaking anything. So in the future, you could add new options. However, you have to have default values. And I would recommend always having default values. But even then, there's risk because you technically do change the contract when you add new values to this options class. Try to avoid it. So I think I'm happy now because now I've created an interface that has pretty much a generic output of records, which is what we're trying to do. Hmm. So I delimited file importer, but maybe it's not a file. So maybe it's just a byte stream. So let's just name, let's just rename this and we'll just say I delimited record importer. I like this a little bit better because now we're not saying files. Now we do need to change here. We're going to say delimited record options. Hmm. Okay, that's not bad. But see, we're still very specific with the I delimited record import. Could we make this better? So let's create another one. Interface I let's just say I record importer. We're gonna say T record. Task I enumerable of T record. Import stream stream. I can't put the options in there because it's no longer specific to delimited. So I think we need to consider some options here. I can use either one of these and which one's better to use. Well, it depends on the use case. 
Um, this one is more generic, so the I record importer is definitely more generic than the other one, than the I delimited. However, the I delimited allows you more options on the fly. So if you're making an assumption that it's always going to be a delimited, then you're probably good to go. Otherwise, you'll need to create some kind of factory during a real-time import. Um, maybe not the best way to approach it. So for now, um, I'm going to leave this kind of commented out. We may use it later. I'm not sure yet. But let's go ahead and say that we're happy with our delimited record importer. We're good with it. It's looking great. Why don't we create some extensions? How do we, how do we extend this? Because we're going to have local files that we want to actually import. Do you really want the user have to manage the stream and open that file stream up and everything that comes along with that? We want to do as much work for our user as we can when we're building these type of APIs. So let's let's do that. So what we're going to do to start building an extension is we're going to create a static class. And we're going to call this um, delimited record importer. Whoops, delimited record importer, and we're going to say extensions. Make it real simple. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to do a file stream, right? We want to pull in something through a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file, or say public static. We're going to pass back I enumerable key record still. Okay. Then we're going to say import. I want to still say import here. Um, and maybe we'll do it import from file. Actually, that makes more sense. We'll do T record. Now, the when you do an extension method, you're extending functionality. You're not really adding to the interface, but you're making it seem like it's added to the interface. So when you do that, when you want to do that, you have to use the keyword this in front of your uh, type definition. So we're, we want to extend I delimited record importer of T record. And we're go here, T record. And we're going to say this is our importer. Uh, we're going to make this simple. We're just going to say return importer dot import. We're going to do null here and we'll say null here for now. For now. Now let's let's show some use cases here. So I'm going to create another class. And we're just going to do a public class program. Um, do static public static async task main like as if we were creating a main console. We're going to move this out so we don't clutter this up too much more. Let's go here. How would we actually use this extension? Let's just see how it looks. I'm going to come here. I'm going to say I delimited record importer, and I need to create a record type. So let's go private class. Uh, we're going to import products. So we have a product, and we're going to say string name, and maybe we have a barcode. Nah, I would say it's skew. That's pretty easy. All right. So let's come back up here. We're going to say product, and we're going to say it's our importer. We don't have an implementation yet, so we'll just make it null for now. What's nice about this is now when I click, I, I uh, type in importer, you'll notice when I hit dot, I have now import from file. Well, that's pretty slick. I can actually then just do this, and you'll see that it automatically takes product into account. It doesn't. You don't even have to specify that because it knows that it's a product based on what the type of the importer is, because that's the uh, ex we're extending that specific type. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, great. It's null, but we can actually use the extension method. So let's go back there and see if we can actually finish this up. So the first thing we want to do is we want to pull in the file. So why don't we um, just go ahead and create that real quick. We're going to say stream equals new file stream. Okay, perfect. And we want to use a very specific one. We're going to use path. But of course, we don't have that in our records, uh, in our parameters here. So we're going to say file path. We're going to say file path. And since we're importing, why don't we just have um, read? Like, we don't need to make this complicated. Um, let's see. Oh, we need file mode. Here we go. File mode. We're going to say, let's just say open. I think that's good enough. Because operating system should open an existing file. The ability to open the file is dependent on the value of file access. And let's do this as well. Um, there we go, file access dot read. Perfect. So we've now created our stream. So it will open it up, then we can pass that stream into the import function. So let's do that. There we go, stream. Now, when you open up a stream like this, you really, really want to you uh, dispose of it at the end. That's where the using statement comes in, the using keyword. So we're gonna do using here. 
and we're going to put this inside. There we go. And I got to have another there. Now, this would not work as of now because we have a task, but we're not awaiting the task on the imports. So we need to make sure that we actually await the task in the using. So we're going to say await. Much better. Okay, we're getting a lot closer. But now what about the options? So let's let's just put options in here. We'll do the delimited record options. And there we go. Okay. So we just pass that in directly. Now, even in extension methods, you don't want to pass in null options. So why don't we just check it? So if options equals null, we're going to throw new argument exception. Argument null exception. Perfect. Uh, why don't we check the file path over there? If file path is equal to null, then we'll do the same thing. So now I can come back to my program and we can, you know, we can use it now, right? So I might have a file here. I might say C temp and we're going to import a CSV file. So it's going to be products.csv. My options, options, and I'm going to do See, delimiter is going to be equal to the CSV, so and allow blank datums is true. And we're going to await this. And, of course, the records would be var records equals. But, man, that seems like a lot to type for a CSV file. I don't, I don't really like this. I wonder if there's another way we could do this. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can extend some other things. So, we could extend this method again. If we'd like, we could just say or CSV from file, but we could also maybe do something a little bit different. Maybe we can import this, uh, these options a little differently. So let's extend the options a bit. CSV from file. And we don't need any of this anymore. Instead, we're going to return, I think, uh, importer dot import from file. And we're going to say to actually we don't need to do that. We're just going to say file path and we're going to say delimited dot default. Okay, so import CSV because that is our default. Um, it might be nice if we actually just uh, name this properly. Let's say default CSV. That way we know what it is. So comma separated variable uh, value. Okay, that's nice, but you know, to be honest, I kind of want to work with this as well. So what if, and let's use a builder pattern. So maybe we should extend instead the def, the delimited record options. So let's try this. We're going to go static, async, and we're going to say, not async, sorry, uh, delimited record options. And we're going to say with tab delimiter, delimited record options. And we're going to say these are our options. We need to put a this in front of it. And all we're going to do in this case, we're going to return a new delimited record options. We're going to make this somewhat uh, immutable. And we're going to say delimiter is going to be equal to tab. And allow data is going to be the same as whatever you passed in. Hmm. I like that. What's nice about this is um, we can do we can add a lot of functionality to build our delimited record options as we as we see fit. So for instance, we can instead maybe have instead of default here the way I did it, let's just make default a really a default. Okay. Um, so there you go. This is just a new one. We are making some assumptions here, so I don't like that either. But what we can do is we can say default and we know this is CSV. So maybe we should just create another extension like this and say with CSV. We're going to say with comma delimiter. And we'll change to a comma. So now, because we say CSV here, we could actually make sure that it is a CSV with comma delimiter. So we've now used an extension on the default to say it's comma delimited. And we're using this extension, import from file, to create an import CSV from file. So now in my program, I could truly separ uh, simplify this down. I can say import CSV file. And I don't need all this because I have my defaults. So that's pretty cool. We didn't do a lot of work and now we have actually added a new function to our importer, even though we didn't have to change the interface 
uh, to add this specific function. We just extended it through this extensions class. I hope this video was useful, showing you how to use extensions to extend an interface um, and to modify your functionality without actually having to change an implementation. In our case, we didn't even have an implementation. We just modified and used our interface, our contract to add functionality, and then any version of the importer, no matter the implementation, will be able to use these extensions. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. We'll see you next time.